Make sure you watch the entire video. We talk about Paola. We also talk about another woman that was in the state park attacked by an alligator. And also a little update on Annalise towards the end. Just a weird little tidbit. What is up, Particular Mel? Welcome back. And there's a major update with regards to Paola, the missing Florida woman. There was two hikers that sent in these images as well as there's video of her swimming in this river. This river is known to have alligators. Like I checked online, you can see there's various types of wildlife in this state park. We're going to go over the details here in a second. Here's the video that was released. This is like the helicopter overview flying over this park. And this place is called Wikiwa Springs State Park. It's not Wakiwa, it's Wakawa. No, it's Wakiwa, I think. And this is a 31 year old woman. Let me see if I can pull up some pictures. This is Paola, 31 years old. And another one here. Okay. 31 years old, date of birth 12 9, 1990. Red hair, brown eyes, four foot, 10 inches, white slash Hispanic. Last seen 12 17, 2021. Last seen at this address. 3330 South Samaran Boulevard in Orlando, Florida by her family. Paola was last wearing blue jean shorts and green or white shirt. She's believed to be in her black 2011 Chevrolet HHR bearing Florida license plate QGI D23. Some of the interesting things is Paola suffers from schizophrenia and she's she has bipolar disorder and she supposedly has made threats to harm herself in the past. However, none were made at this time. This is over the park. Let me show you a little bit of the map. I mean, it's a huge, huge park, man. So this is the address 3330, this area here where she was last seen, but her car was found at this park. Now, I'm not sure like what part of the park, like what entrance it says here, Wakiwa Springs State Park, but then there's like the lower river preserve state park. It's a huge, huge area. That was from a previous live stream when we first covered this story and there was very little and limited information. There's more information that has come forward as far as her family last saw her December 17th. She had lunch with her grandmother, I believe it was. Yeah. When she had lunch with her mother, grandmother and uncle on December 17th. According to the Orlando Sentinel, this is from Oxygen. The next day, her family said she made a withdrawal from her ATM and headed to the state park. That, and she just vanished, disappeared. And then this pictures and video of her, that's December 18th. So investigators are focusing in on this river, this like four and a half mile section of the river. She was positively identified. This is her. And they're using this Zistos portable underwater video camera system. This equipment is high intensity camera system with lights. Authorities said it has the capability to see into hard to reach areas that cannot be explored by standard scuba equipment. So some of the dates that we have so far, we have December 17, where she's with her family having lunch. The following day, she withdraws money from the ATM. That's December 18th. That's the same day that these hikers see her at this park in the river swimming. Then we have December 19, her family reported her missing after they couldn't reach her and later found her car parked at the state park on December 21st, which was Tuesday, but there was no sign of Paola. Some of the previous search efforts that were made from Orange County and Osceola County is they had drones, boats, scuba divers, and bloodhounds from December 21st to the 23rd but they were unable to find any sign of Paola. We know about the schizophrenia stuff. And what is really interesting that I've read at the bottom of this Oxygen article, it says the website of Wakiwa Springs State Park states that swimming and snorkeling is not permitted in the Wakiva River. In 2015, another woman swimming in the river park, despite signs telling visitors it was prohibited, was seriously injured in an alligator attack. This was according to the Orlando Sentinel her story made national headlines and became the subject of an episode of Animal Planet's I Was Prey. The alligator was caught and euthanized by authorities. So that story of this woman that was attacked, I looked it up a little bit more. And thank you for Oxygen for citing the source. And I looked a little bit into other articles and they actually have the story here. And the woman lost her arm. 
He survived. It's pretty interesting. Central Florida woman remains in the hospital after losing an arm to an alligator in the Wakaiva River. Jacob Frick is the man who called 911. He tells us he was just past this bridge here when the attack happened. He says he still can't stop replaying this in his mind. That's Jacob Frick on the line with 911 Sunday afternoon, moments after seeing a gator attack 37 year old Rachel Lilienthal. He's still trying to comprehend what he witnessed. He saw this woman one minute swimming perfectly with both arms, a fit woman, and then all of a sudden she's flailing around with one arm. Frick was canoeing with a few friends. They had just passed Wakaiva Island and noticed Lilienthal swimming alone in a desolate, posted, no swimming area. Frick says his friend told the woman there are gators there, but she kept swimming. I saw the gator take off from the banking, get go to her, eat her arm off, pull, pull her under the water, do wrestling for like five minutes. While this couple helped hit the gator with their paddle and tried to get Lilienthal out of the water, Frick got on his cell phone to call for help. He says paramedics were there within 30 seconds. 30 when I seconds. came up and just see her, her hanging, she's trying to grab on with, with both arms, but only one arm is there and there's just blood gushing out of it. It was, it was the most glorious thing I've ever seen in my life. Frick's last memory of all of this was the woman laying here, and he says he honestly wasn't sure what would happen to her. He's just happy to know now. It's a really incredible story. She's lucky to be alive. Uh, here's another. There were alligator warnings among canoers and swimmers at Wakaiva Springs Saturday. We heard earlier someone said that there was two gators out there. So then we were on alert not to, you know, get in the actual water to go swimming. Still, Deborah Morris says she saw a woman swimming far from the crowds at Wakaiva Island, at least a mile upriver near the vegetation. She was backstroking, you know, just swimming like normal. And then she wanted to bridge. Then, you know, we figured she was fine. About 20 minutes later, just before 3.30, Saturday afternoon, Morris says she heard frantic screams to call 911. Someone had been bitten by a gator. When the victim was pulled back to the dock at Wakaiva Island, Morris recognized the swimmer. I seen the lady like she was in shock, uh, her arm bit off here. Florida Fish and Wildlife officials say the 37-year-old woman was bitten on her torso and lost her arm above the elbow in the attack. The woman dragged underwater over and over by a very large gator. Her arm was gone from here. On, on dial. So, I did see this. This is the Animal Planet episode that they were referencing as she was on. I'll put the link down below if you want to watch it. But basically, you know, she tells the story that she's swimming. This alligator comes and they start like fighting. And some guy, according to her, helped her out by like hitting, I don't know what, maybe with a paddle or something, hitting the alligator over the top of the head with something. And on the last hit that he did, supposedly he hit the alligator like right between the eyes. The alligator didn't like that. And so the alligator swims off and she's talking about how she's elated and in a state of bliss just to be free. And that she didn't even realize at, at, at first that her arm was gone. She wasn't feeling pain at first. She didn't realize her arm was gone. And like she looked and she saw and her, her arm was gone. Rachel also did an interview with uh, the Orlando Sentinel where she talks about her experience. It's, it was pretty crazy and wild, you know, uh, and kudos to the people that helped her out. And yeah, it was a paddle. That's what they said previously. I'm all over the place with recording this, but hopefully Paola's found it's not looking good, like I said. And what's interesting and in how we can kind of compare and contrast these two stories is, you know, Paola, she has these mental uh, health issues or whatever this woman that i know of was in a clear state of mind right uh or that we believe she's just out there doing what she's not supposed to be doing but swimming in this river and so Paola going into that river it might not necessarily mean that she was trying to hurt herself because we can look at uh rachel with a clear mind she was just out there swimming i you know who, who knows what her intentions were but i mean she has made references in the past to harming herself so you know we don't really know what her intentions were was she just planning on going for a swim and coming back or what but swimming in an alligator infested water and you can see this past experience not good by the way thank you for the people that were able to make yesterday's videos and live streams definitely go and check that out go slap a like on it if you haven't or if you missed it with annalise just really briefly before we head out of here what I noticed that was kind of strange, I just noticed now and looking, 
this is not the profile that was making all the posts, but I guess this is a different profile, maybe her own personal thing. I don't know. But when I look at the link where she was making the posts where the video plea and all this stuff, I went back in my history and you can check the links, right? This one's Dahlia that Burgos 50. This one is Dahlia that Burgos that three, five, one, one. So it's two different profiles, but the original source profile is deactivated. So I don't know if she was just getting a bunch of messages. And she wanted to deactivate her Facebook. What happened with the Facebook page and post? It's gone. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please hit the like button. I need the like. I need the comments. Subscribe. Turn on the bell. Notifications makes a big difference. Things are a little bit tough on YouTube. So I'd appreciate that. Take care of yourselves. Peace.